We're gonna see some gifts on Given. Hopefully. We got another combo deck here in the modern format. Uh, this Storm deck has really taken a new angle. Um, with the printing of Brawl. Brawl. You, you now have like six to eight creatures that reduce the cost of your spells. Mm -hmm. And so what you can do is you can... Uh, you can cast one and then cast spells for less mana cast, than well, you could before. Well, right, but then you have this line where you get the gifts ungiven mm -hmm. for the card Past in Flames. Okay. And and that's like a whole avenue for going off. Um, so. Tell me about the avenue. This is not a good affinity hand, or affinity start, rather. I haven't well, seen the hand. maybe she has some, uh, some follow-up in the form of... Scry 2, we've got both on the bottom. In the form of... Feels like Ben's digging for land. Cranial plating. There we go. We need some colored mana here. Oh, there's a glint nest crane. Maddie playing a lot of colored spells in this deck. I didn't see what red spell. I imagine it's Galvanic Blast, but I saw a red spell. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the Gal Blast. And the glint nest crane hand. Disrespecting the cards. Signal Pest. Mm, is that Ben without a second land? Nope, there it is. Here's the Chief of Compliance. Baral. Yeah. And then Maddie with a realization. Aww. Um. So how important is it to get rid of this Baral? Like, do you Galvet blast it here? I would at least, unless I had a cranial plating, um, I would at least leave the Galv blast up. It does have the cranial plating. Um, so if she were to have a a line in which, so what you can do is the reason I wouldn't do it now is because you can sometimes get the storm player to like commit some cards to the stack mm -hmm. and and mess up their math by galv blasting in, in while they're trying to to go off and do things sure um so my only the only issue i take with that is that this um brawl or this deck in particular with brawl really fuels itself out of the graveyard uh -huh. and giving him access to more cards in his graveyard is not a good thing okay but other than that, yeah, you can definitely screw up some math. Sure. Right, Slide of hands, gonna let him look at two cards. So it looks like he's very interested in digging for something. I'm thinking it might be mana. Alright, I think you're right, because I think that that was a land that went into his hand there. And uh maybe Maddie had a good read here that he couldn't quite go off, so she had it. A turn where the the attacking opportunity was available to her there. So there there are definitely lines that let you do a big chunk of damage on turn three, but it's really a turn four deck. Sure. Single pest. Yep. And there it is. Oh, that's interesting. So by not gal blasting Baral, she lets she, it, it lets her gal blast him right now. It's gonna get an untapped land, gonna be at one life. This, this is actually relevant because it turns off his uh, steam or uh, I'm sorry, shivan reef. So I think what he's gonna do here is throw up a hail mary of. He might have a remand in hand. I didn't see one before. He might just be dropping uh some metamorphos. All right. So the metamorphos was yeah was the metamorphos a draw step that hail could. mary into hopefully a remand didn't hit it. If you want to talk about a card that's really good in this storm deck. Remand plays so many different roles. It's oh, very yeah. good. Yeah, the, I mean, the, the Remand, 
I mean, so the obvious one. Here's here's the obvious one. Here's the one that right in my head. You grape shot them for like half their life total. Remand your grape shot, and then you get to cast the grape shot again with even more spells in the storm count. Mm-hmm. And you draw a card. And you draw a card. So uh, that's that's the first one. Um, and it just got pointed out to me that you get a uh, a loot with Baral. It's drawn discard. Loot him. Loot him and shoot him. Don't shoot him. We don't promote violence on this. Well, that's stream. a grape shot. Brrr, shoot him down. I don't think so. Yeah. No, I, I disagree. They throw grapes. Yeah, um, they're throwing grapes, man. Reminds me of a line from a, one of my favorite rap songs. <sighs> Wouldn't bust a grape in a fruit fight. Like... <laughs> Loud as a motorbike, but wouldn't bust a grape in a fruit fight. I mean, that that was. I remember hearing that? I was like, my my mind my mind was like, that's so creative. Yeah, we're we're losing viewers by the second. <laughs> we we're losing live viewers <laughs> listening to me. Wax poetic. Wax poetic about great rap songs is the. Not not something everybody's cut out for. I don't think anybody cut out for it, honestly. I, you are? Whoa! What? My name in the uh, the ticker has been updated. Hideous John Douglas? That is aggressive. No, you're a handsome man. That's, it's, it's like that's what my it's mom like says. Wrestling. It's like wrestling. It's like a kind of a heel. I was always a heel, let's be real. <laughs> yeah. I think Jake's a little bit, little bit salty out there. I don't remember what I said. To I him. think I well, called him a man child. No, I, well, I did call him a well, man child on the stream. I find it interesting that Jake's girlfriend shows up and he all of a sudden becomes insecure about all the other testosterone in the room. Handsome gentlemen that Handsome are doing the stream. Streaming. So that's that's streaming an interesting, uh, <laughs> interesting. Mrs. Douglas is a nice lady. That's true. What's your mom's name? Karen. Karen Douglas is a saint. Karen Douglas and, and listen, is I'll, a saint. It's as close to a saint as you're going to get these days. Listen, you you are one of the silliest guys I know. Just like the absurdity that comes into your mind is ridiculous. And your brother, the one immediately younger than you, is uncontrollable. <laughs> <laughs> like to raise that boy, you have to just be... Mother Teresa walking on water. Mother Teresa walking on water. Wow. That's a big upgrade from regular Mother Teresa. <laughs> who is not nearly as hydrophobic. She's a... Is she a saint? Somebody update me on this. Is Mother Teresa a saint? And, additionally, furthermore, what was what were her qualifying miracles? Qualifying miracle number one: turned the poor and sick into publicity. There's a great like, <laughs> like thirty minute documentary from Christopher Hitchens about how Mother Teresa wasn't that good of a person. Yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> um, all right, so here's three mana for Matty Russell. That's the magic number here in this affinity deck because it generates this cranial plating. And life is a big deal here, right? Huge deal. Um, yeah, if Maddie can just get up to like 30 life, that's a huge amount for Ben to overcome. Yeah, really, it puts the game out of reach. wonder how many... Man, someone said in chat that Mother Teresa is scum. Wow. Uh, this is not a new timer, I don't think. Yeah, no, the old timer something didn't work well with the program they used to, like, Oh, like a new timer all... here. This is not a new 50 minutes is what I'm getting at. No, 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 but they're, they're using a different, um... Yeah, man, it's retro. They're, they're using a different program to generate the timer image. I see. Than they were previously. I don't know why, or, but I mean, that's... 
I'm sure I could understand it should it be explained to me, but I don't know right now. Jake claims it was never working. Alright. It's some more land. More artifacts in Maddie's hand. Well, I... you want more artifacts and less land. But, you've well, still got, got a pretty nice lead here. Yeah, we've got a Blink Moth Nexus, which adds two, two damage to the clock. Um, given the, uh... So what I would be interested in here is playing a colored source. Um, so that I could... I could have fired up the Blink Moth Nexus, attacked, and then if he has, like, a Lightning Bolt or a Vapor Snag, equip, uh, attached, use the instant speed attach ability on the Cranial Plating to the, um creature left behind. No, 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 no. He, oh, sure. It costs one less. He's got the Baral. So I guess you just replay it here. Yep. Ben bought himself a turn there. That was a good play. There he goes. Yeah, like I said, the the uh, the colored a colored source would have been would have generated you know damage that turn, and that's what I'm interested in. Uh, yeah, just keeping up the pressure is a big deal here. Right. Um, I think there's a glimmer post, not glimmer post, glimmer void coming down next turn, which will accomplish this task. Alright, so it looks like Ben sees the writing on the wall and is going off. Trying to. Alright. Storm count of two. Yeah, 12 damage is quite a lot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I only count 8 that Maddie could attack for last turn. Or this turn, this coming turn. So, I don't know. If, uh... I mean, I count nine just on the obvious. And that's not even using all the mana. All okay, right, so nine if you fire up the Ink Moth. Yeah, you put... You put the Past in Flames and one of the Rituals in his hand is, is the best you can do here. In his hand? Correct. I like the Past in Flames in the yard. It costs more to flash back. Okay, so passive flames and metamorphose in the yard, so he doesn't generate more cards. Correct. I think that's the better call, but he's got enough mana to just go off through it anyway. Right. Okay, so so Maddie figured out the same line we did. He needs a grape shot, so I don't know if he has a grape shot. There's one in hand. There is. Yeah, he needs a grape shot or a merchant scroll in hand. Right. He does have one that, hand. That card is criminally underplayed in modern merchant scroll. Mm, it's good in this deck, but typically not so much. Okay, so grape shot for six. And then passive flame is going to give grape shot flashback. So now he gets to reload all his. He just has to cast eight spells here. Well, plus an eight. Because he's already got the storm from, uh... All right, seen enough. So, the the best cyborg card I think Maddie could have here is Graft Digger's Cage. Or Graft Digger's Cage is solid. One that's less played, but I mean, like the the hard lock awesome cyborg card is the. Uh, uh, why can't I think of the name of the card? 
It costs one and a white. It's a 2 2 artifact creature. Ethereum? Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Ethereum. What's it called? Sculptor? No, it's not Ethereum Sculptor. That makes artifacts cost one less. No, no, no. This, this one says. Ethereum Sculptor does. I know yeah. what you're the one you're talking about does. Will you just tell me the name of it? So I don't no. <laughs> I'm going to let you, let you ride this one out. Um. Anyway, it says you can only play one non-artifact spell a turn. Yeah, I don't think that's a standard affinity sideboard card. No, it's not. But it's it's the best one. You can Chat's possibly helping me out here. Canonist. Canonist. No, so, so it's Aether Sworn Canonist, not elsewhere, but yeah. Aether Sworn Canonist. Um, no, Grafty's Cage is a little more mainstream. A little more mainstream, and it prevents you from casting spells from the graveyard. So your Past and Flames lines don't work anymore. So when he gifts you and you put Past and Flames in the graveyard, that's that's the show. Correct. So that's what it does here. Sour cream, suicide. Just. That's aggressive. Cage doesn't do anything versus Storm. Has been declared. Alright. I can, I can see that. Doesn't do anything. I mean, I just, I just told you what I thought it did. What I thought the advantage was, so... Uh, so that's pretty strong. It forces them to have the repeal, basically. Right. All right, so we got a pile shuffle here, just to make sure things are things. You never want your things to not be things. That's for sure. No, and you don't. You want to have like the appropriate number of things every time. So Maddie's just ensuring that there's uh, the, th the thing the number, balances the number, there. Right, the thing. Alright. Alright, one and one going down to this final match. Maddie on the play, this could make a ton of difference. If Maddie got in an extra attack on that last game mm -hmm. with the cranial plating on the Vault Scourge, mm -hmm. I mean, that could have very easily made all the difference. <clears throat> Maddie going to five, though. Sure. I mean, she was never going to get in with the cranial plating on the Vault Scourge. She would have gotten in with it on the Blink Moth Nexus. No, because see, if she a, had an extra, if she had been on the play instead of the draw, she would have the extra turn to do that. Hmm. I think Ben was over by enough, but yeah, I concur. He finished it with Exaxes, so he could have cast Gifts again from the yard and gotten two more. Sure. So that's plus three. So here's the affinity deck down to five. Now, we've gone over this before. It's totally possible to win on five land cards. Absolutely, the we we talk about decks that mulligan well, and affinity is a deck that mulligans well. It doesn't need all seven cards. Oh, going down to four. Four is a little tougher to win from. Concur. Especially since this um, storm deck is very consistent right now. Lots of cantrips. Mm -hmm. Lots of redundancy. Alright, we've got a keeper. Let's try the bottom. 
And a turn one Vault Scourge. Yep, this is a start. Um, she's got more lands, so it, it looks like she's going to be attacking for two next turn. Um, but a clock of two a turn does not does not pressure the storm deck enough to uh, no to make a difference. Yeah, she's definitely playing off the top here. Mm -hmm. Which could be great, man. I mean, she top like gets a gets a graph trigger's cage off the top and yeah, buys herself some time. Yeah, buys herself some. So so Ben has to go find a a repeal. See a grape shot that he drew, so he's part of the way there. Yeah, she drew another land. So 17, 19. No. Another great. man land. Um, that's that's okay. We're not we're not, you know, completely beat up about a man land. Is Ben stuck on land? Didn't see many in his grip. Maybe. That could definitely be a path to victory for Maddie, but he, I, it I, would be hard to imagine him keeping seven. And I think he pushed two to the bottom. No, those are two to the top right there. Two oh, to the no, bottom no, on the first on one. On the yeah. first one, yeah. Which tends to indicate we're missing land. Um, if they want, I mean, normally a deck is uh, redundant as this storm deck. We'll uh, bolt the blink moth. Okay. We'll at least want one of the cards. Um, because there's just not that many options. Like, it's a draw spell, it's, you know... Right. A combo piece, whatever. <coughs> so two to the bottom usually means that we're short on lands. A third Seer Visions draws a Baral. <coughs> Excuse me. Looks like he finally sees a land there. Yep. Going down ben, to 13, he doesn't do, feel any pressure here. Doing some work for I mean, a cranial plating off the top changes changes the game a little bit here. Ooh, there's a Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize is a big deal. I mean, if she grabs a Gifts Ungiven, this is a, a big deal. What do you take here? Do you take the Grape Shot? So taking the grape shot doesn't do a lot. You have to do math here. So if he goes ritual, ritual, that's three, six, seven mana, mm -hmm. eight with the mana morphos, draw a card. Um, yeah, this is this is just not good either way. You can take the grape shot, gives him it basically doubles the amount that he has to cast before he can go off. Right, because he can't. Right, so if you leave him with grape shot in hand, he has to do it. He has to do it once. Right, because he can do it all. Grape shot you, past in flames. Do it all again. Right. Um, but now he has to. He has to go way deeper, with the with the grape shot in the yard because he can only do it once. The draw there was sleight of hand. Okay. Which great for setting up the combo. Not great for trying to go off, but he can't afford to spend another turn on setup. He's not under any pressure here. Yeah, that's what I would do if I was setting a sleight of hand. Alright. Lightning bolt Keeps in a hand. Bolt. Alright, so... So Lightning Bolt's going to shorten this clock by a bit. Draws a card. So I don't see, I haven't seen one Goblin Electromancer. Is Baral just replacing it? No, you're in both. So the bolt will take Maddie to 16, and then on the flashback, we'll take her down to 13. Yep. And that, that will be low enough. So 
so we're in a storm count of eight. Nine. We need to get to thirteen, which yeah, that thought sees was shouldn't be a problem. Was tough. So if the pastel flames were like a gift sun given mm -hmm. to try and set the combo up, that thought sees would have been way better. But he, I mean, he just had with the, he had, he had the whole bit with with pastel flames the way it was. Oh, he had the second bolt in there too. Yeah, that's definitely it. Sure. That's definitely all she wrote. Yep, that's how this matchup goes, I guess. If you. You only get to four. You're just not a lot of options. Yeah, you've got about four turns to get there, or you have to start disrupting. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's that. Um, a good fight. We, did, I mean, it was a, it was good play all around. Um, just not a lot of sideboard cards. Some some deep 